how to connect VGA to CRT TV. In this tutorial I'm going to explain how to make a cable which connects the VGA port to a CRT TV and the necessary programming. I know that CRT TVs are mostly obsolete today, but still it can be useful to have them. So if you have one around don't throw it out, it can still be used for watching movies, presentations and of course games. If you still use one of these TVs, then this tutorial can help you to utilize it as a monitor. How to make the video connection In order to connect your VGA port to the TV's RGB input you have to connect the corresponding color signals and the synchronization signal so that the connection is complete. The connection for red, green and blue signals is straightforward since the signals are already 0.7 volts peak to peak and no conversion is necessary. The TV expects composite sync signal, so the horizontal and vertical sync has to be combined. Luckily for us the TV also expects negative polarity for these signals so the two wires can be connected without any electronic components. You noticed that there is a 1500 ohm variable resistor on the composite sync line. This resistor is useful for setting the level of the signal. When interlaced mode is enabled, the image on the TV screen tends to vibrate vertically and setting this resistor to a higher value lessens this vibration. Of course I never managed to completely remedy this vibrating image but you can try putting in series with the resistor a germanium diode. This diode opens at 0.4 volts and hopefully this will block out the noise. The diode will of course lower the voltage of the signal by 0.4 volts. The TV also has to be put in RGB operating mode by putting a voltage between 1 and 3 volts on the corresponding input pin on the TV. The voltage of the composite sink is around 1.2 volts so this can be used for this purpose. Some TVs have an option in the menu to switch to RGB mode. Use this option if you have it. The VGA's and TV's impedance is around 75 ohms but the cable which we will use have 100 ohms. This isn't a problem since the cable won't be that long or the resolution too high. But what about the sound? This part is easy. Connect the right and left audio channel from your PC's headphones jack together and connect this to your TV's audio left in which is usually a mono input. Don't forget the ground connection. In this case impedance plays no role. You may get some minimal ground loops which can be heard as 50 or 60 Hz noise in the audio but this tends to be minimal. If the noise is really loud then try an RC high pass filter or galvanic isolation. How to make the required cable. To make a VGA to TV cable you will need a male VGA plug, male standard 3.5 mm audio jack. A SCART mail plug if you have an European TV or BNC connectors if you live in the US and a CAT5 cable. Also you will need a soldering gun and a soft solder with flux. I warn you, soldering the VGA pins will be real pain so don't lose your head, be patient and you will make yourself a good quality cable. For the corresponding plugs pinout check out pinout.ru which is in the description below this video. How to display something on the TV. To know what you can do, you need to know what you have. The TV expects certain frequencies and resolution and the VGA emits certain frequencies and resolutions. You need to know the operation and capabilities of both. Let's start with the TV. You can view the TV as a fixed frequency low resolution monitor as opposed to high resolution multiple sync VGA monitors. The TV has a horizontal resolution and a vertical one. The horizontal is around 64 microseconds worth of analog signal around 13 MHz, this is a scan line. Conclusion: The TV has no horizontal resolution since the width of a scan line depends on its frequency. The higher the frequency, the shorter will be the scan line. The horizontal sync signal must be around 15.625 kHz for PL or around 15.725 kHz for NTSC standard TVs. Also the polarity must be negative. Vertically 313 progressive lines of which 288 is visible or 625 interlaced lines of which is 576 visible for PAL. For NTSC 263 progressive lines of which 240 is visible or 525 interlaced lines of which is 480 visible. Vertical sync frequency must be 50 Hz for PAL and 60 Hz for NTSC. The polarity must be negative. 
Now that we know what the TV wants, let's look what the VGA gives. We will concentrate on the basic VGA resolution of 640 by 480. This resolution consists of 640 visible pixels, 800 total pixels, 31.5 kHz vertical sync frequency and around 25 MHz video clock horizontally. Vertically 480 visible lines, 525 total lines and 60 Hz vertical sync frequency. The color depth is 32 bits per pixel. From this resolution we will make a resolution which the TV wants. You can already see the similarities between these two resolutions. The VGA CRTC model. This picture illustrates the structure of one frame of display data. The operation of the CRT controller is complex and it is done in the VGA hardware and we don't need to know every detail of it. If you want to know more about it check out the links in the description below this video. How to access the VGA registers. The VGA registers can be accessed through the I.O. space addresses from 3CO to 3D4. Extended VGA registers, which extends the functionality of the VGA can also be accessed but their location is specific to each card and its location can be found in the card's specifications. All these registers are 8-bit and some are indexed and they are a protected resource, meaning they cannot be accessed from user mode. With the required privilege set these registers can be written or read from within and out assembly instructions. VGA access and programming can be done via a kernel mode driver written in C or C++, or using an adapter driver like WinIO, which you interface from your program. I will use the latter method to implement my program. The link to WinIO can be found in the description below this video. I know that many people don't like assembly but it is essential for our purpose since the flip-flop logic of the CRTC registers sets back to default quickly after reads or writes. At least the CRTC read and write operations do in assembler, do not use WinIO's API for this purpose. Let's do an example of CRTC register access. First you need to write to the 0x3d4 index register the number of the index you wish to access and then read or write the data register 0x3d5. After this the index register sets back to 0x60 at least on my VGA. One more tip, it is not wise to write blindly to VGA registers. Read them first, set or clear bits then write back. What are the relevant registers for us? We will use only a handful of VGA registers and two essential formulas. Register 3 C4 index 1 bit 3 divide video clock by 2 when set. 3 D4 index 0 horizontal total. 3 D4 index 6 vertical total with bits 8 and 9 in overflow register bit 0 and 5. 3 D4 index 7 overflow register. 3 D4 vertical retrace start with bits 8 and 9 in overflow register bits 2 and 7. 3D4 index 11 hex bit 7 unlocks CRTC registers when cleared. 3D4 index 12 hex vertical display and bits 8 and 9 in overflow bits 1 and 6. 3D4 index 13 hex offset register bits 8 and 9 in extended offset register. The location of the extended offset register and interlace enable bit should be documented in your card specifications. The two formulas that we use are for the horizontal sync frequency which can be calculated by dividing the video clock with horizontal total times 8 and for the vertical frequency which can be calculated by dividing the horizontal frequency with vertical total. I have already done the calculation so I won't do it now. I will give you the results later. More about the VGA registers and these formulas you can read on the free VGA website, for which the link is provided in the description below this video. How to do the actual programming. Ok now let's get really low level and technical. In order to set up the VGA registers you have to do the following steps. Enable access to the registers by initialize WinIO function. Then unlock the CRTC registers. Divide vertical display and 10 bit value with 2. Set the divide video clock by 2 bit and you will get from the 25 MHz video clock a 12.5 MHz one. The horizontal and vertical sync frequencies are also divided by 2. The horizontal sync frequency is correct for NTSC standard so we need to divide the vertical total 10-bit value with 2 to get 60 Hz vertical sync. 
Also we need to set the vertical retrace and 10 bit value to vertical display and plus 10. The value of vertical retrace and must not be greater than the vertical total. For PL add 8 to the value of horizontal total and set the 10 bit value of vertical total to 312 and the 10 bit value of vertical retrace and to vertical display and plus 25. Multiply the 10 bit value of the offset by 2. This means that every other lines will be displayed from the frame buffer so we get a resolution of 640 by 240. This is a progressive resolution at 50 or 60 Hz. You can also set the interlace bit and you get a 640 by 480 interlaced resolution but you would get also a flickering image so choose. Finally you lock the CRTC registers and call the shutdown when I.O. function. Now you must be wondering what's the big picture? How all this works together? First connect your cable to the TV and to the VGA port of your PC. Detect and power on the second monitor. Set the resolution to 640 by 480 60 Hz 32 bits per pixel and extend your desktop to your secondary monitor. Set up the VGA registers via your program. Also you should turn off the hardware acceleration for your secondary display because it causes cursor issues and certain applications can crash the video driver. Now all this sounds good and finally we are at the end of this tutorial. There are some issues which I couldn't solve. Namely to make the whole procedure of detecting and configuring the VGA to TV interface plug and play. First I would need to pull the RGB comparator bit say every one second to not put much stress on the CPU, to auto detect when a monitor is connected because the VGA port doesn't have an interrupt. 75 ohm loads are detected on the RGB lines of the VGA. Then if detected it would be nice to distinguish a TV from a monitor. DDC maybe? And then powering on the display with ACPI and extending the desktop and setting the resolution with WinAPI. If you know something about these things please write below in the comments section. Thanks for watching.